Welcome, I'm Dr. Nick Delgado, and I'm with Professor Mike Chan. Uh, Mike Chan wrote a book, two books actually, Stem Cells in Rejuvenative Medicine, an amazing book that uh, basically goes into the latest and the most important findings on how to restore the mind and the body. And furthermore, he also wrote with his co-author, Dimitri Kloko, The Comprehensive Guide to Biological Medicine and Wellness. We're here in studio in Costa Mesa, California. Uh, Mike, you just came in from Germany, correct? Yes, I travel around 60 hours in between. Oh and gosh. I just have two hours of sleep, but I'm always good. <laughs> I don't have jet lag all my life. Yeah. That's amazing. And you know, it's great because you and I had a lot of time to visit before the show and talk about the incredible work you're doing in Malaysia and uh, over, over the world. 90 yeah. countries, is it? Uh, uh, 67 six, countries? Uh, 79 countries. 79 sorry. countries. Yes. And so doctors around the world are being trained in your protocols. And it's all about stopping the clock, the optimal anti-aging strategy. So regeneration, what does it mean and how does it work? How is that compared to degenerative uh, and rejuvenative? What are we trying to do to all right. regenerate? You have to understand, you know, in the human body, you have 37.4 trillion of cells. Okay, and in, among the cells when you're born, there are also certain mother or parent cells, we call it the stem cells, yes. or the wonderful cells, that, they're the super cells. But there's only one out of 10,000 we are born. By the age of 60, you only have one out of 800,000. And the amount of stem cells are going down very fast, meaning you degenerate and you age very fast. By the age of 18, you already have only 45% left of your stem cell in the body. By the age of 30, you have 45%. By the age of 60, there's only 5% left. So we are really aging at a very, very fast speed. Oh, you wow. Know? Yes. So we have to do something. We have to steal the time. We have to reverse the clock to a certain extent, delay the aging process. So right now, a lot of these treatments and therapies are not available in the United States. However, you have formed organizations around the world, uh, I believe in Europe and in Asia, and soon possibly in Mexico. Is that right? Yes. yes. So these treatment centers are dealing with diagnosis, detox, regeneration, and repair. And you and I completely agree. The body is just filled with chemicals that are coming into our system on a daily basis. So we have to learn how to detox. And more importantly, the doctor, if they're going to help the individual with a challenging situation, has to know how to diagnose. And then you go about the regeneration uh, and the repair process. Yes. So give me a little bit of information about that. How does the human body maintain its natural ability to heal and regenerate instead of depending on traditional drugs, surgeries, rather harsh treatments, which I think are more of a last resort, don't you? Yes. Now, what you have been generally saying is more on towards biological medicine, which is something which is coming from Europe more than 150 years ago, especially with the Germans and even with the Soviets in the old days. Okay, it's nothing new with the Swiss and German. They are very strong uh, uh, advocates for reversing aging and keeping younger. Okay, so we always say keep young, uh, look young, feel young, the Swiss or German way, you know. So in biological medicine, we always believe that your body can heal by itself. Yes. Okay, to a certain extent. So you must treat and find the root of the symptoms and not just to treat the symptoms. For example, if you're having, uh, you're having sleepless night, you cannot be just taking sl a sleeping pill for the rest of your life, you know. But I do have a lot of patients who are telling me, oh Mike, if I don't take the sleeping pill, I'm a lawyer, tomorrow I have to go to court, I cannot focus, which is also very true. But in the way of biological medicine or biological wellness, we are going to stimulate the pituitary gland and the pineal gland to release the melatonin. Melatonin is released at 9 o'clock at night. Okay, so if you stimulate the release of melatonin, then the patient will sleep. And if there's not enough melatonin, you will never sleep. So this is one of the ways where we can stimulate without doing invasive treatments. Okay, now again, we follow four steps of wellness. Okay. We always believe that we go with a program called DDRR. What is DDRR, the fourth step? You diagnose very well the conventional way with all the pathological tests and the hormone tests, but we also have another way with the Swiss and German where we do biological testing, where we have some other device to diagnose and check on the organs or the pattern of sleeping of a person, the stress of the brain. This can be found in this book, which is published in UK and found in 10,000 university and medical libraries all over the world. It's and, published and in UK. Mike Chan, yeah. I'm the first to get a copy of the book. Yes, you are officially uh, <laughs> for, 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 for this stem cells book, yes. yes. Because this book just arrived in US. 
Okay, and, and this book has been there for a few months. Yes, we have more than 50 doctors who have bought this book in the US when I was down here in one of the medical conferences on stem cells. It was sold, and it was sold off Amazon. There wasn't any book left in Amazon by popular. We had to do a reprint, and this is the first time this book is coming out. It's approved in UK, approved in Hong Kong with ISBN number, and recently approved by the Chinese government by Fudan University Press that they are coming out with this. Uh, Fudan is one of the top biotech in China. So that is a good part about this book. Everything you need to know about stem cells, or peptides, or exosomes, or whatever you name it, they are right in here. Again, please remember, cells are cells. Extracts are extracts, peptides are peptides. They, have diff they do the same thing. It's just like you have a car. You have a Tata car from India, which costs you $1,000 US, but you also have a Rolls Royce and Lamborghini. Why do you spend so much money on a Lamborghini for $1 million then? But the thing is, the technology is different. It's like an iPhone. You, uh, you have iPhones 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <laughs> Today, your iPhone 10. IPhone. You know, technology <laughs> change every day. So right. in, the, in the field of stem cells, we have to go with the technology too. Again, coming back to the DDRR, diagnose properly, do the detox, you must have full detoxification, then do the repair. After the detox, you must repair. After that, you only you regenerate with the cells or the peptides. Because you shouldn't be just regenerate and giving, giving the stem cells without doing a detoxification or a repair. And the diagnosis of by the physician is so important. You give a wrong diagnosis, then the results will not be good enough. Yes. Well, Professor Mike Chan, you've been doing this work in actual re regeneration of tissue. We know other animals can restore a broken leg or a lost limb. They can regenerate these things of the body, including the head in some organisms. So how did you learn the secrets to duplicate this in humans? Because partially that's what you're doing. You're getting at the cellular level, at the biological level, and you're working to rejuvenate organs that have become old and dysfunctional, and you're trying to reverse that aging process, correct? Yes, now we all know for centuries, you know, there's already everyone is looking for the fountain of youth. Okay, if someone today was to tell me, I have a magic pill, I have one thing which cure for all. Unfortunately, I have to say there's nothing like this still. Okay, everyone is still coming up with a view, vision of a fountain of youth. Now, fountain of youth means you have to be a combination, concoctions of therapies together. Okay, now coming back to regeneration, what do you mean by regeneration? Obviously, you can regenerate, just like the liver. The liver itself has 75 cells in the liver, and the hepatocyte is the main thing you need to regenerate your liver. So the right way to regenerate your liver is to give the hepatocyte, because the liver is a filter, but it's also a dustbin, because all the cells will surface in the liver. Yes, yeah, so okay. define yes. then, you're talking about the cell of the liver. Yes. Hepatocyte, the, the actual Yes, the hepatocyte, the yes. right cells. Okay, so those yes. cells you have to then infuse like cells to rejuvenate, particularly if they're young from a young organism yes. to rejuvenate that organ, yes. correct? Now, please bear in mind most of our organs and tissue can regenerate to a certain extent, including the brain, okay? But again, there are certain organs, especially, example, the kidney. You are born with kidney cells as you're born. So we have to be careful with the kidney. If you have to make sure that they're in good order. Now, how do we regenerate? And we are talking about young cells. Now, what do you mean by young? When we say young, means it's just take for example of our children. If you run with your child or your grandchild of 10 years old, you're running in the field for three hours, and, and they're so tired, and so are you too. <laughs> Both of you went to sleep. The, uh, the, the young one, the 10-year-old guy, will sleep for only ten, uh, 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 half an hour or one hour. You wake up, and he will still run very well for another few hours. But not so for us. We may we probably say, oh, I'm too tired already. I can't run. Because every cell has a lifespan in the organs. That means every organs and tissue, there are 220 organs and tissue in our body. They all have a lifespan. For example, the fertility of a male and female is 35. The breasts of a woman start to age at 35. Our hormones start to drop by 1 to 2% at 40. Our eye vision start to drop at 40. The liver start to age at 70, the oldest organs to age. But the rest of the organs, including the brain, start to age as early as 20. But the frontal lobe is only fully developed at the age of 25. So you can understand in the brain itself, as one organ out of the 200 organs and tissue, the brain itself has 67 cells. So when we have to treat the brain, we also have to find out what disorder of the brain it is. So when you have to treat Parkinson's patient, what is wrong with Parkinson's patient? It could be a release of dopamine which is lacking. So instead of having the drug dopamine, we can 
fine-tune and give the substantial nigra to release the dopamine. Again, with autism, when you want to treat autistic children, you probably need the brain cells again. We have to analyze which part of the brain that's a damage for the child. And probably it, you need the frontal lobe, you need the hippocampus, you probably need other types of cells. Same for the Down syndrome. You probably have to give the medulla, alba, or some other cells. You know? So this is how we work. We work on the principle of simili, similibus, Simili, uh, similibus, similibus curanto in Latin and in English it means like treats like. You need the liver for the liver, you need the brain for the brain, you need the heart for the heart. So when you have to treat heart problem, you give the cardiomyocytes and it will work well. So, yeah. so as you stated, the liver is probably the most miraculous organ because you can lose part of the liver and it'll reju rejuvenate, yes. re regenerate. Yes. Other organs aren't quite as fortunate. Uh, the lens of the eye, the central nervous system. Uh, yes. Certainly this is where you're looking at cell therapy yes. to help to maybe prolong life and of course uh, prevent or reduce suffering and death. You and I had a very interesting conversation this morning and we talked about why? Why did you get involved with this? And I wanted you to kind of retell a little bit because I think it tells us a lot about your mission uh, to help uh, stave or reduce yes. suffering and illness. Uh, you first learned a lot going to yes. Europe, yes. correct? And yes, with your I, wife? I learned in Europe. You know, I was with my wife in England and in 1985, mm -hmm. we stopped by in Switzerland for three weeks and we were exposed to some rejuvenation clinic in Montreux and, 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 and Geneva. And then I come to realize there's a lot of the rich and famous who go there to become younger and, and within a few days they're injected with some live cells those days, feeder cells, why feeder cells? Because cells at the feeder stage are zero. Okay, and in the fetal stage, cells of all animals, including human, sitting on top of the animal kingdom, they are alike. In the fetal stage, we are talking about cells of the organs and not the organs. Because with organs, there will be, trans there'll be a rejection. Now, this clear a bit of confusion, because when we say xenotransplantation, it means cell xenotransplant cells, xeno cells transplantation. It also can mean cell organ, transplant uh, organ transplantation. So there are two parts. One is with the cells of organ and one is the organ. With the organ, total rejection like you with human too. But with the cells in the fetal stage, there's no rejection. So this is, this is also uh, shown in the book. Now I learned a lot from why I was in Switzerland and Germany in those days. I was so fascinated by what the Swiss and German has been doing. Mm -hmm. I always believe in making myself very young and others to be very young too. I'm 58, I still have my natural hair fully blown hair, I don't, I've never done any coloring, neither do I have any gray hair in my hair, head. And I always believe you must have all the energy, you must have quality life. I believe very much in quality life and that prompts me to learn a lot from the Swiss and the German and in the later part even with the Soviets where we learn from the top Ukrainian and Russian type scientists. Today I have some of the top Ukrainians and top uh, Russian scientists even in Europe and even in uh, certain parts of Asia. I run a clinic, a chain of 21 centers all over the world. Yes, we are expecting to Mexico. We hope we will be expecting to Bahamas and there will be more coming in. And we are setting up manufacturing plant all over the world. Uh, uh, it's not just in Europe alone. Things are moving very fast. Technology is going very fast. We must come up with the best. And the important thing is you must deliver the results. So if you, give, you don't give the results, you will never have the sustainability of a business. Okay? It's not just the business. The help of the patient and the safety must come first. Yes, yes, so the health and safety. And it's interesting that in the U.S., uh, statistics starting in 2017, the average organ transplant r r runs hundreds of thousands of dollars, all the way from kidney to liver to replacing lungs or heart. And so what we're concerned about is how can we reduce this ever-increasing cost or expense not just to the individual, but to the taxpayers, to the countries that are burdened by ailing uh, patients that are suffering and need a solution. So what you're looking at is how can we then intervene, reduce this incredible escalating number of people that require transplants. Nearly 20 people die every day waiting just to get an organ transplant. And it's, it's tragic because there really are new breakthroughs. And so it, the part that I think challenges some of the scientists and doctors, you made a statement a moment ago, Professor Chan, Mike, and, and that is that you said when the cells are first developing, that cells, say, of, of another Spe species such as a pig, which is somewhat very similar yes. to, to humans, okay. can actually translate and give that rejuvenative process, that that 
that sense of the organ rejuvenating. So you've discovered this in theory, but now we're looking at a radical way to reduce cost. Is that true? Yes, yes. Now you have to understand, I did mention that in the fetal stage, which is zero age and the best stage of a cell, we are talking about fetal stage cells. That means the, the 473 cells found in the 220 organs of the tissues in the body are all fully formed. They are all in a way differentiated to a certain extent. Most of them are unipotent and multipotent. Okay, and the good part is that in every organs and tissue of these cells, you give the right cells, you have the right results, number one. Number two, there is no emphatic shock through my 35 years of experience treating thousands and thousands of children all over the world and adults in all kinds of disease. Because in the fetal stage, the antigenicity is never there. Antigenicity normally was set in when the child is born or when the lamb or the sheep is born and when the lamb or the baby suck the, the milk of the mother and that's where the milk went into the intestine and bacteria set in. So we have to understand this stage. Now again, with xenotransplantation, everyone say, Xeno, no, I've heard of it in USA, but it has been there in Europe for the last 150 years, nothing new, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of drugs which are coming from Xeno. In fact, some of us could probably be using exposed to Xeno all the time. Insulin comes from pigs and cows, okay? Cerebral lies in one of the drugs which is coming from pig's brain, you know, for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease found in all the pharmacies in Europe and sell at a fraction of a cost for the treatment of Alzheimer's and dementia is approved in Europe, but it was never sold in USA because it's coming from animal. Now again, Japan, one of the top country in stem cell research, in especially mesenchymal cell research, and recently they came up with IPSC a couple of years back. Now, all of a sudden, the Japanese government also make another U-turn here. A few years ago, since 2014, Japan has came up with more than 80 publications of which 60 or 75 of these 80 publications involve xenotransplantation. And 75 of them are talking about animals, pig stem cells, where they implanted into different organs, of, uh, implanted into human, especially with pancreas. Now, we all know that in the pancreas, you know, there's a number of cells in the pancreas. There are around 13 cells in the pancreas. The right way to treat a diabetic patient or someone with a pancreatic problem is to repair the pancreas. And you give, in the case of a diabetic patient, islets of the Langerhans. That is the right cells to use for the pancreas. Now, you can give the stem cells, you can give the cell extracts, you can give the live cells, you can give the peptides, you can give the exosomes. Of course, they all work differently, but they all work to the same place. They will home and repair the diabetic patient. Now, do understand, in the case of diabetic patient, it's not just the pancreas alone. Diabetic patient normally also have some problem with the fatty liver, or they could have some problem with the uh, stomach intestines. Diabetic patient, the end game will be a kidney transplant. Again, kidney transplant is a big problem here, okay, uh, apart from retinopathy for diabetic patient. Now, kidney transplant is going to cost the government a lot of money, number one, and people die waiting for a suitable kidney most of the time all over the world. The next thing you have to understand, why don't we implant the cells of this organ and save them to come to a stage or a damage? If we can repair them and prevent them from leading to complications of diabetes or uh, chances of kidney transplant, then they will never have this problem. And we will be saving the country, the government of each country, thousands and thousands of millions and millions of money. So recently we did one patient, a medical uh, doctor, who attended one of our seminars, and, and he came away from America. We gave him uh, extracts, the microorganelles, which doesn't cost a lot of money at all, and he was treated, and he was off dialysis, and he was in wow. stage five. Okay, he was in stage five, and he went back to stage three with the reversal. Everyone is shocked, and I myself uh, is shocked to a certain extent that the, the, the repair is so good. And he was a, a cardio patient with a cardio problem, and we went for a surgery and he has the full damage of his kidney. So he has a, a good recovery of the kidney and the heart. So there's a lot of things you can do and there was a YouTube on this too. Well, Professor Mike Chan, you're the author of uh, two very important books, Comprehensive yes. Guide to Biological yeah. Medicine and Wellness. And all of your work in Switzerland and Germany and around the world and Asia. And now you have this newest book, Stem Cell Reju in Reju Rejuvenation, Regeneration, that is medicine. And so you have really 
kind of brought up some terms and that is you're talking about various type of cell therapies and you use the word home. They home meaning the cells when they're injected in the body they go to the site of injury. Inherently they know a kidney cell has to go to the kidneys if it's injected at or near. Yes. If it goes to the brain, if it goes to the root of the pancreas depending on what organ based on the diagnosis. So you have precursor stem cells, living cells with high uh, proliferative activity, you have fresh frozen cells, living cells with the average proliferative activity, cell extracts which are organ specific peptides and then cell supplements that basically mix various ingredients. So are these part of the elements of rebuilding organs that otherwise would have perished or uh, stopped functioning properly? Is this, yes, is this yes. the basis? Yes, because every cells and stem cells of the organs and tissue are aging. Okay, so when they age, the function drop totally. And mm -hmm. remember, every organs in our body, including our brain or even our sex organ, will string. Okay, the function will uh, string. And after 40, there will be 10,000 dead of brain cells in our, every day from our brain. Wow. So our brain will function lesser as we age. So we have to practice our brain to a certain extent. Again, we have to understand homing. When we say homing means they are homing to the right place. If you give the hepatocyte or the liver, even the whole liver, they will home to the liver. They will not home into the brain. Okay, if you give the, the kidney, it will go to the kidney. So it's important to give the right organs and tissues, kidney for kidney, liver for liver, heart for heart. So if you are giving certain cells, let's say a placenta or a mesenchyme, and you expect the placenta or mesenchyme to home into the brain or to turn into medulla alba or a pineal gland, I do not think so, because they are of a different types of cells. Okay, wow. remember I'm saying you have 473 cells in your body. Okay, out of the 220 organs. But again, when you're born, you also 473 have 473 trillion 400, cells. 473 types of cells. Oh, types out of cells, of yes. the 37.4 trillions of cells. Yes. And out of the 744 millions of stem cells when you're born up to two years old. Okay, your stem cells are deteriorating at a very fast speed. Now, again, when you have injury, the stem cells will go to the site and do the repair. But you also have to understand, when it's an organ-specific cell, let's say the brain for an autistic child, okay, a hippocampus is needed or a frontal lobe is needed, then you must give the, not just the brain cells itself. Because the brain cells or the brain cell extract or the peptides or the stem cells, if it's the whole brain, means you have 67 types of brain cells there. So if you want to move into very specific and treat and, uh, and uh, regenerate at a very fast speed, you must throw the dart hitting the blue eye of the dartboard. Yes. Sometimes when you throw the dart, you don't even miss the dart. Uh, you miss the dartboard and eventually you have zero point. But when sometimes you throw, you hit certain part. But it's not the 50 point. Only the blue eye gives the 50 point. So I believe you must be very organ specific to give the right thing. And this is through our clinical experience of spending 34 years of my life together with my wife, Professor Michelle Wong. We spent all these years in Germany, Switzerland, and many parts of the world. All over we travel, we learn from our masters, we learn from everyone, and we came up with what, and we continue to learn as everyone has to every day. Well, yeah. I've had multiple treatments with various types of stem cells, and I'm really intrigued and excited because over the last uh, nearly 20 years that I've been working for 40 years learning about detox and nutrition and fitness and the power of the mind. But the most exciting of all of medicine to me, uh, since as you know, I love cellular biology, looking through the microscopes and analyzing and testing things. So when you're dealing with cell therapy, you're giving the body genuine replacement parts. Kind of like if your car breaks down, we know replace the fender with a fender. If the, if the alternator breaks down, put an alternator in. What you're saying is, don't go and put a generalized cell in the body like mesenchymal. You want to get the cells that relate to that repair to restore that particular tissue. So fixing or maintaining the body is similar to fixing or maintaining a car. One piece of cell at a time and with a natural design, functionally ready to go for your health. So this is very elegant, very exciting, and kind of the future of all cellular medicine really starts at the cellular level, right? To, yes. to help people to live longer, better yes. quality life, whether it be, as you mentioned, autism, uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, we're looking at uh, organ degeneration. 
uh, chronic degenerative diseases, and of course the frontier of cancer and heart disease and, and kidney failure and diabetes, all of these things and more. We're going to talk more about these different things, but really, how does this cellular therapy work, the actual enzymes? Kind of describe that as we're looking in the image here on the screen. Okay, now let me explain to you, okay, why you need different types of cells and not just the mesenchymal cells. Now, throughout my experience of spending 34 years of, uh, with human stem cells and cells and animal cells and stem cells and even the peptides, we have to understand, if you were to just take the mesenchymal cells from umbilical cord blood, okay, or even from a fatty tissues, you can have the mesenchymal cells, okay? But the problem is the mesenchymal cells will do the stimulation in the body, but the mesenchymal cells will never home. Again, I'm saying that you need the brain cells, you need the hepatocyte. You cannot expect the mesenchymal cells to turn into a hepatocyte and repair the liver, okay? So you need the mesenchymal cells for the stimulation, but not the repair. But in the case of the repair, you will need the specific organ cells, okay, or the peptides. So of course, in my dictionary, the cells will always work better than the peptides because the cells itself contain, if it is the stem cells, it will contain all the organelles, it will contain the mitochondria, it will contain all the exosomes in it. Okay? So it's like a full yes. package. It's like you're wanting to repair the car or the human body yes. and a, a proper shop has all the parts uh, specific to that particular type of car, that Lamborghini or that Toyota or whatever it yes. is. And same with the human body. You have to have the repair material yes. and injected properly under the right conditions, preserved in such a way that it's immediately taken from yes. a live situation yes. and not too much time transpires to make this therapy work. Is this yes. part of, of your yes. groundbreaking okay. work? This is type of Nobel Prize type work. This now is let me tell you, the cells stuff. will only survive for 72 hours in the petri dish yeah. or in a while. After the, before the 72 hours, you must change the tissue culture media. When you see something which contains cells or stem cells, okay, they must be alive. To be alive means you must have oxygen, you must have water, you must have nutrients for the cells to feed on. Otherwise, the cell is just like a baby, you will die without the milk or the food. Okay, so you also have to understand when the cells are feeding on the nutrients, the cells will also excrete certain gases, which will be toxin. So it will be like a goldfish swimming in a clean water with full of oxygen. After eating something in the water, it starts to excrete and it, the water turns milky and the fish die because of toxin. Yes, The fish toxins. will exactly be just Correct. like the cells. Now again, when you have feeder cells that zero age, they're still in the mother. Okay, they're in the fetal stage, they are stronger. They can sustain better because the quality of zero age cells is better than the cells which are already born. One year, uh, let's say for a human is nine months. Again, the problem is that we cannot be using humans, different parts of the organs to, to kill a human for another human. That is for these reasons we have to use animal and we have to use SPF animals. What is SPF? Specific pathogen free animals. These are the right animals because they are free from all the pathogens. There's no viruses. Okay, now why a Lamborghini and a Tataka? You have to understand. The human body is just exactly like a car with all the parts in the body. You may have, a, when the car is too old, the body also rot. Okay, but what about the engine part and certain part? Mm -hmm. They also rot too because they'll be falling nonstop like the liver is performing. <laughs> and if you don't give it rest, you are uh, punishing the liver with a lot of drugs and uh, alcohol or whatever. Then obviously it will die faster. I mean, it will, it will degenerate and at a certain time it will, it will not function. So same for the cells. Now again, do understand like a car, you have a Tata car, you have a Toyota Corolla, you have a Honda Accord, and then you have a Mercedes S-Class BMW, and then you have a Rolls Royce with a bigger engine. And why do you choose a Rolls Royce? Because the CC is bigger. So if you want to treat a disease, let's say talk about liver disease or a pancreatic cancer. Sometimes a patient only have a few months to live. If you use a Tata car, it may take a long time to reach and the patient will die before the, the, the therapies comes in. So we have to do a Lamborghini here, raise it and save it within the three hours and a Lamborghini reach it within three hours, then it will save it. And in the case of disease, within the next few months. So that's the reason why you need the stem cells. Otherwise, you can use the cells. Otherwise, you can go something further. You use the exosomes, you use the peptides. 
Okay, so you, it matters a lot according to the condition of the patient and the type of disorder at that moment. So this is an individualized therapy. Every diabetic patient, every Down syndrome, every autistic children will not have the same concoction of cells or the treatments. They vary accordingly, according to the health condition of the patient at that particular time. So, yeah. Professor Mike Chan, yes. being the author of Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine and Biological Wellness and, and Medicine and Wellness, you've been looking at organ peptides and how they're prepared in extract method. You look at each patient. Some patients actually might benefit from all of the intervention therapies. They might use uh, exosomes, uh, nanopeptide, they might do stem cell treatments because depending on the severity of the situation and the yes. intervention, and I'm so excited because I've been to Malaysia several times and yes. now you've invited and you're gonna be speaking in Thailand uh, yes. September, I believe 6th and 7th yes. or 7th and 8th. I'm gonna be yeah. flying in uh, mm. September 11th and uh, after I do my talk September 15th, 16th, fly to your clinic yes. in Malaysia to, to study and meet the top scientists. Of course, I met uh, the co-author, uh, yes. Dimitri uh, yes. Kokel, yes. in Las Vegas at the A4M. So this A4M, just so those people new to us, are a, an organization of 26,000 physicians around the world, all collaborating to learn from each other. And we as educators and teachers are blessed because we are bringing cutting edge technology to help the human body, the cells, the tissues, the organs, the systems, Systems. And that's involved with all of these systems, yes. obviously the musculoskeletal, the cardiovascular, the res res respiratory, digestive, urinary, nervous system, reproductive, endocrine, uh, the skin system, the immune system. So all of these things play a role because the body functions in an amazing fashion. But if there's dysregulation or toxins or injury or aging and disease, yes. we have to intervene at whatever level it is. Yes. And so the importance of locating the process of aging, the different types of individuals, whether it be an athlete and joint problems or a movie star yes. concerned about their skin or their body or even the brain for a scientist. Yes. This is just amazing treatment and therapy. And here's a partial list, and I mean partial, of yes. the things that you yes. are addressing in this recovery or regeneration of tissue. So speaking of that, it's so exciting. We were talking earlier about using and, and people thought this was strange, but sperm cells, okay. the, the, the components of, or using other biological material, and think about it, it's the only immortal cell of the body amongst a few other tissues, right? Sperm cells, yes. they, they're virtually immortal, true? Yes, to a certain extent, yeah. yes. So, yeah. so you're looking at the most powerful cells extracting in a safe, um, effective way, and then in the various countries that are allowing this groundbreaking type technology and biological intervention, people are gaining the benefits. So tell me, the benefits for these people in this list of conditions, you've seen with your own eyes, and I think that's what motivates you the most, isn't yes, it? To yes. see the transformation yes. in these patients. Now, yes. There's no guarantee, we're all up against aging, we're all gonna eventually die, I get that. And I, I preface that with maybe, because you and I are kind of looking at that <laughs> okay. possibility of anti-aging and yes. extending life beyond what no yes. man has ever done or woman before, right? Yes. So is yes. that part what motivates you? And what have you seen personally in your clinic and facilities and with the doctors that you work with around the world? Now, I've been working a little bit doctors across 79 countries. We have been uh, speakers in all the medical conferences across the world. The brain excited me very much. I love to study a lot on the brain. I will have always have at least 200 books of each disease and I read every author who wrote certain things on different therapies. I learn from them too, from every book or every exposure. I believe in life we have to share and learn from each other. Okay, from my own experience, every patient with different disease to treat even with the rare disease where there is no, we call it, untreatable disease, there is still a solution. Okay, and every patient who come to us to be treated, I'm very confident they will have the improvements. We do not want to guarantee it, but I'm very confident. Why am I saying that? Because when you treat a patient, you are not just giving one particular cell. You will be giving a number of cells because even for a diabetic patient, for a kidney patient, they still need regeneration. They still have some, some damage in other organs. So you also have to repair the other organs. Now, as we age, we need the brain. We need the pituitary and the hypothalamus. We need the liver. We need the placenta to do the circulation. We need the, the kidney. 
you know, we need the heart, we need the, the spleen, we need the mesenchyme. So we are not just going to give you the mesenchyme alone. We will give you a number of differences according to the condition of the patient. Now, I've been having a lot of doctors. They are aesthetic doctors, especially the Korean doctors. A number of them in their 50s are telling me, Mike, 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 please help me with my vision. I'm having a bit of problem with my aesthetic work every day. Yes, you know, I don't aesthetic. see very well. So I've been doing a lot for patients with macular and ocular generations. You give them the retina cells. If you give the retinal stem cells, it will work better. Okay, then the cells. But the, of course, the retinal stem cells. Yes, correct. of course, you can also give the peptides. Okay, mm -hmm. now imagine sometimes things do not need to be very expensive. If you give the peptides, it's so cheap that it's affordable to everyone. Now, if you want to go into deeper, then you can give the retinal cells with the optic nerve, and you have to understand the eye see means doesn't mean the brain will see. So you have to give the occipital look too. So this is how we work with occipital lobe, occipital yes. lobe, because the brain had to see. Most of the time when we age is because the brain is receiving the information very slowly and the brain is uh, delivering the information to the organs very slowly. It's just like a pain. You have a pain, your, your, heat hit some, your leg hits something. It takes time for the brain to receive it and to, uh, to send it down that you have a pain. You know, this is how we go. Yeah. Well, in the, in the year 2000, I wrote this book, Grow Young and Slim. Wonderful. And I was working with Dr. Ronald Klatz and Dr. Bob Goldman. And I've been personal friends of theirs for all these years. And it's so exciting to me to see that you're advancing the whole science of anti-aging and longevity. And I, like you, I'm fascinated by the fact that we don't just have to accept aging as a typical process. We can slow the aging process. We can reverse the aging process. Definitely. And, and I think the important thing, uh, Dr. Mike Chan, is that you and I view interventions differently than traditional medicine. They wait till a disease has taken hold. They're trying to do some care. They're trying to use drugs and medications and surgeries. And we're looking at lifestyle medicine, biological medicine, rejuvenative medicine, yes. really serious advancements in detoxification. I, I break it down into four steps. Detoxification, nutrification, rejuvenation, uh, and the power of the mind. Yes. If, if we intervene with at least those four steps, yes. I, I believe you and I would agree that most of all science can come to a pinnacle of success, better than we've ever experienced in any prior generation. Yes. The challenge we have is that some of the bigger, uh, big companies, big pharma, big food industries, they have their agendas and they have their specific single medicine or single uh, dogma of a, a particular processed food. And yeah. we're looking at, wait a minute, the body is complex, but in a certain way, it's simple, isn't it? Yes. It gets back to the cellular health, yes. doesn't it? I totally agree. We have to understand, if your body don't need certain food, or certain supplement, you probably may not have to have them. But if your body need them, yes, you must have them. So it's important. I totally agree that you must do the diagnostic the diagnosis properly. Yes. Then you must do the detox. Detox is so important. Yes. And then you will have the repair. Okay, the repair must come after the detox, yes. then you rejuven rejuvenate. So rejuvenate doesn't mean you have to spend a, a huge fortune to do that. Again, I totally agree with Nick live with lifestyle medicine because you are doing a prevention yes. before a disease set in. The disease was set in, all of us will have a time in the hospital. It depends on how many times we have to go. If you don't take care of our life today and come up with better prevention step, obviously you will spend more and you suffer more as you age. So I totally believe that we must be as young as possible. We can reverse the aging, add more quality life, extend to our extended years. It's not just having an extended years with all the money in the world, but without the quality life. So I have seen a lot of very rich patients, even billionaires who will say, Mike, uh, I can see that they have all the money in their life. You know, they have everything, but they are not having the quality life which is needed. So my way will be to say that we can even make an old man become a wild man and the same for the woman. We can do that easily, okay? Even by just fine tuning the pituitary gland and the adrenal cortex and increase the release of hormones in the gonads, okay? These are a lot of things we can do. We can build the muscles of sportsmen easily. You give the lungs to increase the stamina, okay? You give the peripheral muscles to give the muscles. 
It's exciting. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I am written up, I have several articles as a contributing author to the Encyclopedia of Clinical Anti-Aging Medicine and Rejuvenative Biomedical Technologies. And I, along with many other world-famous authors, am now blessed to have uh, Professor Mike Chan to be sitting next to me and us talking about the incredible breakthrough science and the work of the Academy. And if you can see the title of one of the abstracts uh, wow. that I wrote, Yes. Uh, back uh, in, in the early years. Wonderful. Uh, yes, on, yes, on sexual rejuven reproductive system disease and then repair and implement the male sexual dysfunction and other considerations. So, you know, as a published author in medical textbooks at Harvard and Yale, this book's used in some of the top uh, facilities and research uh, libraries in the world, it's interesting that when you go back to Guyton Medical Physiology or Merck's Manual and you look at the workings of the human body and then I'm speaking alongside Dr. Terry Hertog uh, in Malaysia and KL and you and I have the blessings to work with the top experts in the world. We're both one phone call away from yes. some of the greatest and yes. now that you've invited me to come to your facility here in September, yes. I am so excited because I look forward to the cellular therapy that yes. I'm going to enjoy. And don't be surprised when I come back looking years younger, stronger, better than ever as yes, I turn 65. Yes, you'll be much younger. I always <laughs> believe, you know, everyone I met, they say, Mike, you seem to be younger than before, than 10 years ago when I met you. Because we have to be young. We have to be a living testimony of what we are. Yes. You know, I always say that I'm 58, but I can still run faster than my <laughs> three boys of 18, 20, and 22. I have three boys, yeah. you know. Now, we obviously have to understand there's a lot of way we can do it, and it doesn't really have to cost a fortune to maintain no, it. No, 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 no. Again, I totally agree with Nick that you must have the highest sexual libido as you age too. Yes. Because when your sexual libido went down, down, you are actually aging. And you have to understand our hormones are dropping by one to two percent as we age, yes. generally after 40. That is for a general person, but there's some people who abuse their health care, their health condition, they may even have a much faster dropping of their hormones and always they age older. So all you have to do is do some stimulations if you can, and, 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 and that is how we do it. All right? And Er, er, there is a solution to everything you can do, put it this way. There is a solution to every disease. I will not say nothing's work. There are certain conditions it will work, but it depends on to what level. Again, I have to uh, inform that not all stem cells will work. You have to know you have to use the right stem cells or the right exosomes or the right peptides. Otherwise, it may not work. Please remember, we need a light tricks like condition here. Yes, it's according to uh, the research, Gunter Global won the Nobel Prize in Physiology uh, uh, in Medicine in 1999, discovering proteins have intrinsic signals that govern transport and localization in cells. And so what we're looking at is the advancement. And you mentioned sexuality. It took me 36 years of research to write this book and one year to actually write it, Mastering Love, Sex, and Intimacy. And so the core of our very being begins with our spark and interest in that other yes. being, that other yes. spouse or loved one. And so mm -hmm. we, we uh, of course, you know, uh, looking at the work of William Rader and Dr. David Steenblock and work around the world, uh, I, I came to the conclusion in the early days in 1990s, I wrote the book, How to Look Great and Feel Sexy, that Tony Robbins used at events. And you know, eating live food makes live individuals, live yes. enzymes. You see yes. how I eat and live, yes. eating yes. fruits and vegetables. I do the same process. Yeah. I do the same too. And working out every morning, yeah. detoxifying yes. and nourishing yes. my mind with incredible yes. pe people like yes. you. Yes. It it is so exciting. And, and we I, must I, have good brains. <laughs> we because must if have you don't have good brains, brains we are also aging. <laughs> because yes. the brain is the main thing for the sexual desire. Yes. The pituitary and the hypothalamus is very much needed. Yeah. So we must take care of our brain very much. Absolutely. So for those of you who are struggling, I wrote a book in the early 1990s, Weight Loss and Energy Now. And you and I collectively have written some really exciting, motivating books. But you know, it takes kind of the word of mouth. It, we want you to share this technology and biology with your friends, your relatives, and decision makers in the government and in medicine. Because you know, the multiple international awards and innovation of quality that you've received, an award winner, particularly in 2012, 
2012, the yeah. Nutraceutical Business and Technology Awards, yes. the incredible awards of Asian Pacific International Entrepreneur in uh, Excellence, an award in, in uh, 2011, and the you know, International uh, Star for Leadership in Quality in Paris, and Asia Pacific, the top CEO award. You, you are really kind of an artist and a perfectionist, I know, and at the same time, you know how to apply what you learn to turn it into a real life solution. And that's what excites me about sharing your incredible publications, your innovations, your products, your therapy. And you know, I'm not one that just endorses anything that comes along, nor are you. We hold the highest standards because if it's going to enter into our patients or our, our yes. bodies, it yes. must be the best of the best. So look around the globe, check out what's going on, and look at who's doing the research. And then more importantly, who's taking that research and doing something with it that's innovative, that's going to transform lives. So how can we absolutely slow down degeneration? How can we, with the work of European Wellness and the EW uh, Biomedical and all of this great formations, bring the rest of the world up to date Yes. And partnership with the greatest people in the world, Dubai, Germany, Asia, India. You and I have traveled all over yes. the world. Yes. And we'll continue. It's tireless work, but I am so proud to share the stage with you. And I want you yes. to say a few words about just basically how did you understand aesthetics and therapeutics and using at the cellular level, how did you formulate these incredible products that I'm now going to be part of to, to bring to the world? I'm so excited about it. Now, I'm a cell biologist spending a lot of time together with my wife and the full team of cell biologists across the world. Of course, it's not just the cell biologists. Also, we have the PhDs, few, you know, who are doing a lot of research work together with the clinicians, in this case, the medical doctors. So we have three teams of doctors who work together. The good part about me is not just on the research and formulation, because we go with education. We don't have a marketing team all these years for 30 over years. So how do we promote in a certain way? We have to educate the physician, and this yes. is through education. I sincerely think education is so important. It's not just to the physician. And by the way, the, you the and I are not to paid to these, go to these yes. conferences. We spend yes. money to yes. go to yes. educate doctors we never and, charge and tireless, so yes. amazing work. Yes. Yeah. Because we are learning from them too. Yes. And we are yes. learning from the patient too, <laughs> because <laughs> we must have the good feedback from the patient too, okay? Yeah. To understand sometimes why certain things don't work, we have to dig further and everything is a challenge and you will like it when you see your patient having the results yes without the results you will never be happy it's never for the money alone you must have the results it's very important well yes. the importance of success and seeing the outcome with these patients and how the cells the tissues the organs the systems rejuvenate it's a constant battle. Obviously, aging is the toughest frontier that anyone could ever take on. I, I know as a child, I once thought, someday I want to know the cure for cancer. In my lifetime, I want to know the cure for most chronic diseases and premature aging. And many of these diseases are either self-inflicted due to inappropriate understanding about lifestyle medicine, the improper diet, using the wrong chemicals or drugs, or basically just you know, not taking care of the human body in proper sleep and cycles and, and bioenergy and, and, and the, the biorhythms of the body. But the reality is that when you put it all together, we have the opportunity to probably yes. reverse degenerative diseases as we know them and at least live a better quality life without suffering, without disease. Yes. And certainly if disease does enter into the equation, it's only at the very end stages. And maybe that's when medicine does its heroic interventions yes. as yes. at best. But unfortunately, yes. all of medicine has focused on that mm -hmm. and ended up using up entire countries' budgets. And instead of getting early on, like what we're doing yes. at this stage, right? Yes. Yes, totally right. <laughs> now, I always believe, why must you pull on the pants and then you go look for the toilet? You <laughs> must be going to the toilet and then you pull. The same things in this condition too. We can do the prevention to a certain stage. Now, again, do understand, everyone ages differently. You can be going down like this, or you can be going down like this, or you could be going down like this. Okay, so you have to understand, it's like you driving a Lamborghini or a Ferrari at a very fast speed. You're pressing on the accelerator deeper. And what will happen? A certain time the car is going too fast, it may bang into something. So what if you press the brake? 
stop the momentum for a while and then press the accelerator again. It's going like this and then it goes backward and then it goes again. The total change, this is what we are going to do. We will reverse the aging this way. We will reverse the complications of all the diseases this way too. It's like a diabetic patient. If you only have 15 years of life for good quality life, you can drag it for the next 30 years. So you keep dragging, play the dragging game. That's what we are doing. We drag and drag and drag. Uh, Professor Mike Chan uh, and your co-author Dimitri uh, Kloko, I I'm so excited that this original book, A Comprehensive Guide to Biological Medicine and Wellness, and also it has uh, the ISBN code, people can order it, Stem Cells in Reju Regenerative Medicine. We are actually shipping these books out to doctors right from yes. our facility here in Orange County, yes. Costa Mesa, California. Yes. I'm going to have a signed copy from yes. Mike Chan. Yes. And you know, I think that this is a message that the whole world needs to hear. And literally we have millions of viewers now on YouTube. Please share and engage, ask questions. We're gonna go ahead with your permission and translate, interpret what you said yes. word for word because yes. your and our uh, speaking is a little different with the uh, second language uh, as the primary language. Yes. So yes. a little bit accent. I'm yes. understanding everything because yes. I go to a Malaysia yes. a lot. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm loving yes. it. Yes. But yes. the audience will go ahead and put word for word in, yes. in the transcript so you can then in engage and yes. if you want copies yes. we'll if with your permission we're going to probably yes. co-publish a, a, a lay public wonderful, book as well wonderful. and put it out to the audience so that you yes. can get the latest in treatment therapy most affordable onto the most elite and you know until we can do volumes of treatments and bring the cost yes. down so yes. more and more people yes. can benefit because at this time, insurance isn't really involved. We're doing you know, cash basis direct to, uh, from the doctors to the patients. But yes. our mission really is about education. It's not about sales. It's about yes. teaching you that, listen, yes. there may be a better alternative to what you've been facing, a better treatment. And why does biological technologies and research need to continue? Because I believe it's the future of all of medicine. Would yes. you agree? I always, uh, to many people, they say stem cells are the future of regenerative medicine. But to me, I would say it's already the present. It's the present and the future because there's so many other therapies we can treat these days. You know, contrary to what people think and contrary to many people who thought that it would cost a lot of money. Sometimes you don't have to spend a lot of money if you have to treat it with the proper diagnosis. And I, I wanted and to protocols. say in conclusion that NOP and MO are not synthetic peptides. MO, these particular peptides are larger in molecular weight yes. and used by subcutaneous injection or intermuscular, intermuscular true. Yes. And they can be used every other day or twice a week in terms of the case of nano yes. organ specific peptides. Yes. And I am so excited because it turns out one of the topics that I'm speaking to the doctors in Malaysia is on peptides in the future of medicine. And I, when, when Dr. Olga uh, Goldina said, you could come into my studio, I said, please, although I'm very, very yes. busy, come into my studio, okay. spend the night at my facility. Yes, I'm see, so glad See to. what we do together. And I let's... like what I saw here, okay? <laughs> I like the passion in Nick. Yeah. It's exactly the passion I have too. Yes. I love it. I love every day of my life. I spent 14 to 16 years of my yeah. day working on I know you do. what I'm doing. I know. Now, what is so special about the nano? The yes. word nano already tell you is nano size. It's two to three nanometers. We won International Inventions Award in Geneva and in, in the Middle East for this invention. We spent 16 years to make certain things which become so small that they can even go through the pore of the skin. The pore, wow. skin, the pore of the skin is around 50 to 75 nanometers. This is only two nanometers. Can you imagine that? Okay, so it can be used even on babies and it's totally safe, totally chemical <laughs> free, no preservatives, you had to put it refrigerated. Yeah. So this may be the next frontier to the intervention for a category of people that's dear to my heart, autism, Asperger's, uh, children with mongolism, various uh, disorders that some people believe are genetic. We believe there may be some interventions now present along with some advanced uh, energy medicine, lifestyle medicine, really working closely with the parents, with the children. I myself have two children that uh, were introduced into the world 
due to some what I believe were unfortunate accidents with my first child uh, with the injection of a vaccine-like uh, uh, substance that later was banned and the pharmaceutical companies ended up just not taking responsibility. As you know, they basically passed that off to the governments to, to handle. And I don't want to get into the emotion of that and the whole debate about it because I know it's a heated area, but the reality is whether you know or we understand the cause of brain damage and cerebral palsy and asthma Asperger's and autism. Uh, this is this is a passion for me because I know what it's like raising a child uh, for 30 years who struggles with just simple language. I know what it's like to take care of children and, and seniors and adults and going through the disease, the in, inflammatory conditions, and, and really suffering to the point where no one seems to be able to help them until now. Yes, so there is some is solution for all this thing. Our record is treating a 27-year-old. I just treated one a month ago, American patient, referred by American doctor who sent it all the way to Malaysia, one of our clinics in Malaysia. Of course, they can be treated in our other clinics all over the world too. They came and uh, we treated them and a week ago, I just received a news from uh, the father. My son is improving. We are so happy. And can he have a, a, a glass of beer today? So I say, obviously, you know, when I met the child, he was two, three times my size. And, and it's, uh, it's good news. But this is not the only autistic child we have. We've been treating a lot of autistic children as old as 26 or 27 years old. Wow. Yeah. So we're talking about those people who are suffering from or dealing with, and I appreciate that even Facebook and Instagram, they don't want people to feel bad when you use the word suffering or disease. Let's just say they are challenged with adrenal diseases, hormonal imbalances, arthritic conditions, autoimmune diseases, blood disorders, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, circulatory problems, genetic developments, as we mentioned, Down syndrome, chromosome abnormalities, immune system dysfunction, kidney disease, liver disease, lung disease, memory impairment, muscle diseases, neurological diseases, ocular conditions of the eye and ears, psychological and physiologic fatigue, skin diseases, surgery, accidental recovery, sexual dysfunction, ED, auditory dysfunction, and viral conditions. You know, this again is a partial list and I was blessed to interview uh, the author of How Not to Die, Dr. Michael Greger, who's a world famous researcher who has over 2,500 medical journals reviewed every month by his team of 10 researchers. And so he and I spoke about the early advent of lifestyle medicine, starting with the core of healthy diet and exercise and stress management and physiology. But now we have something that even those who are suffering from or challenged with conditions that prior to this seemingly was no solution. Now we're again not saying this is a guarantee that any or all of these conditions will change or improve. What we're saying is we're needing you to be part of this growing yes. movement to yes. bring your doctors to be educated, to try yes. the most advanced treatments because governments are not funding us. This is not money that we are looking, obviously investors are looking to putting into biological medicines, but the reality is that it really starts with each individual. Each individual saying, hey, I'm willing to take a step towards the fight against aging and chronic disease. And that's why I'm going, flying out to Malaysia besides speaking to a world-class group of doctors and educators yes. as you are. But we, as you and I, seek the best in the world as you went to Germany and Switzerland and I go all over the world as well. But the difference between most people and doctors is, although we blessingly accept where they're at in their particular profession is, we're looking at what's the next advancement? How can we go beyond, almost like Star Trek, go where no man has gone before? Yes, I always yes, used to love that uh, yes, uh, yes, pre-line for the movie. Yes. But are we at that place then? I know you have to run to your next uh, appointment and facility to look at the advancement in medicine here yes. uh, in Mexico. But um, in one final word, whatever that is to inspire our audience, what can they th look forward to and how can they get in touch with you? Now, you can contact Nick. Um, we uh, closely for formulating with Nick some of the new formulations. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can also buy the book from Nick because you'll be at a very special discount if you were to get it from Nick. You know, Because I would love very much to work with Nick uh, with his network. Our main thing is to help the patient as much as we can. And I always tell all my doctors in my 21 clinics and hospitals across the world, we must always treat a patient with a heart. We don't treat a patient referring to the file. 
the file is in our brain. When we speak to the patient, all his medical history is in the brain. So the patient may call you 24 hours any time of the day, and he will ask you specific questions, and you can answer him specifically because you treat with the heart and the passion. So we must work with the passion. It's not just the money. We must work with good passion and dedication. We learn from every patient, every cases. We learn from every exchange of opinions among peer members, P members, and all our colleagues. That's life. You have to learn and love what we do, and that's wonderful. I always say life is beautiful. Well, Dr. Mike Chan, a professor of uh, the sciences of biological medicines, four simple steps to total health. And you and I agree, we hadn't even met prior to uh, a yes. few years ago. Yes. Diagnose, detox, rejuvenate, repair. I add the yes. word nutrify and the power yes. of the mind because without yes. the directive of the totally power agree. of the mind subconscious yes. level, we won't even yes. seek these kind of advanced yes. treatments yes. and compliance, sticking yes. with a yes. program. Yes. So we have the complete program between yes. uh, Professor Mike Chan and yours truly, Nick Delgado. PhD. See you at the next event. Please share this with those of you who are thinking about the future of advanced intervention in rejuvenation, lifestyle medicine, and anti-aging. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.